Well, to matters closer to home, may I begin first by saying this. We are all in mourning at the death of Queen Elizabeth. It is a private matter. Everyone will feel differently. As I said earlier about Boris Johnson's observations, you somehow keep expecting like a little child that the Queen will turn up somewhere. Proof of what she herself has said often, grief is the price you pay for love. And we are grieving. That said, do we need a public holiday? For what? To grieve and remember? We're doing that now. There are millions of Australians who would have doctor's appointments and have been waiting for months. Do they now wait again? I've said on this program often that the construction industry is on its knees. Many big construction outfits have gone broke for so many reasons. Those who survive are way behind. If you need concrete, you have to book three weeks ahead. In this environment, with all the difficulties we face, a holiday on the 22nd of this month is simply unaffordable. Which brings me to this point, and I've said it before. The new Prime Minister has had a significant makeover. He dresses superbly. The sentiments he's expressed, as with the Queen and other matters, bring him great credit. But it's on policy that he'll come unstuck. He doesn't seem to understand that. He and Bowen on energy policy are leading the nation into an economic suicide trap and leading his party into the political wilderness. They won't survive for a second term. I'm not Nostradamus, but I told you 18 months ago that Morrison couldn't win the election. I'm telling you now, this net zero emission stuff and 82% renewables by 2030 is a pipe dream. With it, of course, comes the demonization of coal. I don't know who was advising this mob in Canberra, perhaps the same people who are advising the Reserve Bank when they said there'd be no interest rate increases before 2024. Only last month, the International Energy Agency said that the global consumption of coal was rising to 8 billion tonnes this year, matching the record set in 2013. Worldwide coal consumption was up 6% last year. And while gas prices continue to soar, and by the way, gas is also a fossil fuel, more countries are switching to coal, which is good for us. Thermal coal produces electricity. The Hunter Valley has the best in the world. Coal royalties and coal export income are helping us out of our debt. But Bowen thinks we don't need it for cheap electricity here. It is a political fiction that mankind causes most or all climate change. There's a publication called the World Climate Declaration, signed by over 1,100 scientists and professionals. The authors say, authors say there is no climate emergency. The Nobel Prize laureate, Professor Eva Gia Eva, rightly argues that this business about climate change has degenerated into a discussion based on beliefs, not on sound, self-critical science. 